The following announcement has been paid for by the Elite Mark Order. Welcome to the Elite Mark Order podcast, reviewing AEW Dynamite from February 8th, 2023. I'm Cosmic Scott, and with me tonight is JV, also from the Elite Mark Order. How you doing tonight, Jay? I'm doing good. Uh, looking to forward to reviewing an interesting show. Yeah, it seems like there was a bit of controversy and probably what we're going to start with tonight. So in reverse order, tonight we're starting with the main event, which, strangely enough, was the tag team match between the Acclaimed and the Guns, Austin and Colton Gunn, the Ass Boys, Mijos Culos, if you want to say it in Spanish. <laughs> um, and as we all know, the conversation around the interwebs today is that the guns won, unfortunately. And I say that because most of us were betting against them winning, even though we all anticipated the guns winning. We anticipated Billy Gunn turning. He didn't. But they yep. still ended up cheating to win. Billy got hit by his sons. Of course he did, because that's the big drama. And then at the end, they won. So... It was an okay match. I mean, you know, the match flow was good. It took There was a horrendous ref bump. Everybody's talking about how, uh, I forget his name. He's got a similar name to a, a Fox NFL account uh, broadcaster. Uh, Sterling Sharp, Stephen Sharp, something like that. And he took a horrendous ref bump. It looked nasty. He was out forever and, you know, did his part. Counted one, two, three, but the guns won. Now, I know... You're not a big fan, Jay. What do you think about this? Yeah. No, it's last week we had talked about, um, you know, we were we were going to move on to the next segment. And I'm like, hey, wait, there's a couple things we got to talk about in this main event. And uh, and Scott, you said last week that you thought the guns were going to win. You yeah. said straight up the guns are going to win the titles next week. Yep. And the other thing we discussed was whether Billy would swerve. And uh, in my opinion, the only way the guns were going to win is if Billy turned on the acclaimed. That didn't happen. So on one hand, I think it's good that they kept the act together, you know, with um, with Daddy Ass and the acclaimed. It's it's a good it's a good gig they got going. They should ride it out a little bit. Um, you know, there's always a, a a peak to these type of things, and um, I I'm not even sure they they reached it yet. If they set up the acclaimed with some good competition and some good storylines, um, you know, the, the acclaimed could have become even more popular. Well, However, that's not what they decided to do. What they decided to do was drag on an angle that's been going on between Billy Gunn and his kids that's been really been been on and off for a year and a half since, you know, since the guns started fighting. And, I mean, in a lot of people's opinions, the, the, they're sick of the guns. The guns should be off TV. Um, they're, they're not good wrestlers. They're below average. They're green. Um, they haven't had any highly rated matches they haven't had any average rated matches because they're awful in the ring um and to to put the titles on them i think is a disgrace to the tag team titles um i think it's you know when aw was formed um a lot of the founders were adamant about having a strong tag division with great tag teams and having the best wrestling uh, the best tag team division in the world. And it's like, you tell me, do the guns represent the, the best tag team wrestlers in the world? All right. So when it comes to actual wrestling, we talked about this. We talked about it in the discord at length, the guns are green. Austin, the, the short one has some ROH experience. Colton, the tall one didn't Colton came in absolutely green. 100% never really wrestled before and you could tell whereas austin had a little bit of experience had a little bit more charisma seemed like he was going to be kind of the superstar breakout of the two brothers that said they've spent a lot of time on dark kuba has posted many many times about how they are kings of the dark tag team they've been winning you win. was it 50 I think it was. It, it, whatever it is, I'm pretty sure a lot of it was posted at the EliteMarkOrder.com website uh, under the blog section. And I do know that they were just working on dark. They were working on elevation. And that's where they got 99% of all their match experience. And then 
couple weeks ago they had the match with the FTR and they won, and now they won the title. Now, is that rushed? Absolutely. There's no question it was rushed. They're still very green. I don't think this is benefiting anybody. Now, you're calling it a disgrace to the tag titles. I hear where you're coming from, but the focus of the teams in AEW has shifted to the trios. They basically gutted what was the tag division, what was a very deep, high caliber tag division, and took it into the trios. You got the Lucha Brothers with Death Triangle there, obviously the Elite. You've got uh, AR Fox and Top Gun. All of the top tag teams are currently in trios. Now, who does that leave in AEW for tag teams? People like the Iron Savages, who I absolutely adore. I love Boulder and Bronze, and I think they're a great tag team. And where the hell are they? I know Boulder was was hurt for a long time. He just came back. They've had him on Dark. They've had him on Elevation for a while. Why couldn't they be involved? They're a great tag team. Sure, maybe they're a little green, but so are the damn guns. Butcher and Blade, they're still a duo. Where the hell were they? They could have been the tag team champs. Now, I don't think they're there to be champions for anybody. They're in their 40s and they're great hands and they don't really have much of a character. The guns have a little bit more character, but not much. I mean, there's so many other tag teams. Hell, put it on freaking Truth Magnum and, and, and Power of Floyd or whatever the hell his name was. The Outriggers or Outbladers or whatever the hell their name was. They, they got a reaction from the crowd. I think they might have more experience than the guns. I don't know that I would call it a disgrace, but the focus on tag team wrestling disappeared when the trios got introduced. And really, there's been a hardcore focus on the trios. But I thought that's what the Young Bucks were there for, was to create this vibrant tag division, to create these amazing tag champions, uh, not champions, but tag teams, FTR, all these other guys, the absolute top of the best tag team in the world and now you got colton and austin gunn the ass boys who were put over by danhausen and the ass boy chant from the acclaim and i just yeah they have characters yeah they have more characters than some of the other tag teams but good god almighty why did tony do this well the idea from what i've gathered is that they're gonna have a three-week run they're going to go on to the, pay, the pay-per-view and they're going to lose either back to the Acclaim, which is fine, or to FTR. But FTR is leaving in April. They're probably not re-signing. The Young Bucks, people have been talking about how the Young Bucks not, might not re-sign. What does that do for the tag division when the two best tag teams in the freaking world leave your company? That leaves you with the guns as champions? No, thank you. The Acclaimed haven't peaked i don't know anybody that's tired of scissor me daddy i don't know anybody that's tired of max caster and his raps why take the title off them at this time it's very confusing to me so the the only thing that that makes sense to me is if ftr has re-signed a deal or FTR is considering re-signing a deal and Tony wants to put the titles on FTR at Revolution. Like that would be that would be great to see. Like they could avenge their loss to to the guns from a few weeks ago when when Dax was all beat up from the the dog collar match against the Briscoes and they could win the titles and having the acclaimed go against FTR, you know, is two is two two face teams. It doesn't make sense. So I get that. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing that makes sense. However, I I just just based on what you know listening to the podcast with Dax um that he's doing right now on on you know the ad free shows Conrad's podcast network um I just don't I just don't think FTR's ready to come back yet um Tony could convince him though you know he he can dangle a lot of things in front of them if he wants them to resign um he- Tony has said that that the Bucks and FTR are his 1A and 1B tag teams that he values the most and that it's interchangeable who is 1A and who and who is 1B. So we'll, we'll see if FTR is going to come back. If they're just doing this to add some interest to the pay-per-view for a rematch 
at Revolution. I'm I'm gonna thumbs down it because I think given given the guns the tag titles lowers the the quality of the of the championship. Having their name in that lineage really lowers the quality of, of the champions and it, it decreases the value of, of the titles. That that's unfortunately so, true. And that's really if if you look at it the point of uh, a championship is you put your best. Now, this isn't the world title. This isn't the the TNT title, which you know on Samoa and on uh, Darby, on Joe and Darby, those guys that brought some prestige back after it was lost a little bit with Scorpio and Sammy and their back and forth. The All Atlantic, that's you know, swap it around all you want, great. But this is the tag title. This is something that they prided themselves on having the best of the best for the tag teams. And I agree with you. I don't think having the guns as tag champions is beneficial. That said, think about the New Age Outlaws. And you have to because Billy Gunn is a factor in this. Nobody knew who they were. They were a non-issue. They were a nothing team until they got the titles. And then Road Dogg came up with his oh, you didn't know thing, which got them more over than anything. Their wrestling certainly didn't get them over, but that entrance did. So maybe, maybe this can get the guns over as legit heels, but this isn't the way to do it. The The tag titles, they've, they put too much stock in those titles. They put too much work and effort. The Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers put on incredible matches for those titles put their lives on the line cages cleats with spikes in them dives all the crap that we come to know and love from the young bucks and the lucha brothers and top flight and all of the top tag teams but the guns just don't perform at that level and and ftr winning it back from them great but Come on, there could have been anybody else you could have given it to. But for some reason, Tony loves the guns, and maybe they'll grow on me. But the acclaimed grew on me before they got the titles. And that's the way it's supposed to be. The guns have not grown on the audience. They have not shown that they're high-quality, high-caliber wrestlers. It's nepotism. And I think that is the biggest rub. I think that is why fans are rejecting this so much is because if Billy Gunn wasn't their father, they wouldn't be anywhere near the titles. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, you know, just kind of reviewing the roster and, and looking at, at, at some of the other options that you potentially have with the the tag titles. And you know, one of the arguments has been, Oh well, you know they don't have any other tag teams right now. So, I mean, you could have Wheeler Yuta t- team in with someone from Blackpool. You could have best friends Trent and Chucky e. T. Wardlow could be teaming with someone. The Lucia Brothers are available right now. They're not doing anything. I know they're taking a break after the six man, but they're there. You have House of Black. Any combination of Murphy King um, and Malachi Black. Lance Archer is available. Luchasaurus is available. Uh, Silver and Uno is the Dark Order. Um, and Reynolds. Yeah. You got Keith Lee. You got Jungle Boy. You got Kingston, which are all in non-existent programs or weak programs right now that could have been set up to be tag champs. I think out of those, um, it would have been really nice to see best friends um, get their due. Um, I'm I'm a you know big fan of Trent and Chucky e. T. And, you know, it just the guns getting the, the tag titles over them is, is kind of ridiculous. Um, now, the, the, so, the, problem, the problem I have is most of those are face tag teams. So you'd right. have to have a turn. Right. You'd have to do a lot of work to get them there. There were plenty. There was, there was a swerve. There, you could have had his guys. You know, there's any number of, of heels that could have stepped up. You, you listed a few of them. And, like, Luchasaurus could have teamed up with Swerve temporarily. You could have Luchasaurus team up with any number of people to be that heel team to, ooh, surprise win. But they already have legitimacy. They have character work. And the guns, I I just, I don't know. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a dark time for the tag division. I think that 
the young bucks as they're reconsidering the, you know, their contracts coming up in any year next January. Um, you know, I think their dream of, of a, their, what they were looking to do in AEW was kind of headline and help foster the, the greatest tag team division that wrestling has ever seen and putting the title on uh, an annoying heel faction with go away heat that can't really wrestle uh, is is not what they had in mind, um, and that's it's a, it's a WWE move. Um, it's disrespectful of the titles, and I, I think they I think this decision could potentially cost uh, Tony Khan the bucks in a year because you know hey you know things are looking pretty good in uh, WWE right now if you're Sami Zayn or if you're Kevin Owens. I mean those guys were the Young Bucks boys. They were part of Mount Rushmore together. Well, actually Mount Rushmore was. The Bucks, Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens, and uh, um, Adam Cole. And now Adam Cole is stuck in AEW for like four more years. So he's not part of this equation. But um, yeah, I think that the grass is pretty green over there right now. And to to put the title on the guns is just like, I just, I just can't imagine those guys being okay with it. I just, I mean, maybe they are, but I just don't see it. I don't think it was their version of of what the AEW company was supposed to be. Yeah. It just, it, they wanted to build the, the top of the top for tag teams. And they did that. They, they've had some of the best tag team matches I have seen in God knows how long, just phenomenal. Most of the time it was young bucks versus Lucha brothers, but there have been other matches. There've been other phenomenal tags and this wasn't it. This just, Again, if they had built some legitimacy beforehand, not just one fluke win over FTR, maybe it wouldn't go down so poorly. But we, everybody knows watching that if Billy Gunn wasn't their dad, they'd probably still just be on dark and elevation. Now, mind you, they've got, they would never gotten in the business to begin with. Most likely. Probably not, but we won't go there. We're assuming that dad, still got them in the the business but you know either way the the fact is there are better teams out there and uh, i don't know why maybe maybe this is it before the guns lose their contract maybe they don't get re-signed and this is the the big push that okay tony's like okay billy i'll give them the titles for a couple of weeks if they can't get over they're done we can only hope Right, so we'll see what happens over the next few weeks. Um, I I know a lot of people are saying, oh, the acclaimed had the belts too long. No, you know, as you said, of people say there's no other tag teams, you know, and that the all the other tag teams are, you know, the reason they they set up the trios division anyway is because there were too many tag teams that weren't doing anything. Yeah. Um, but this wasn't the result that I had in mind when when they did that. No. Uh, the, so the trios does division does cannibalize the tag team division, and I'm not really a fan of the trios titles. Um, I I mean I love I love of course I love seeing Kenny and the Bucks fight, but I don't think having those three guys in trios titles is is best for business. I don't um, I don't and... think the trios is working. I don't no. think it's working as a division. No. And no, and everyone said this going in. I mean, it's not a surprise. It's never worked anywhere. Oh. Never worked anywhere. Triple A, CMLL, where where trios are a mainstay, it would work. Well, I, yeah, I can't really speak for you know for for Mexico's promotions. Um, so, but in in US and Japan, I've never seen a trios title that that has meant anything ever. Yeah. So, I mean, this this the best of seven series elevated the trios title to yeah. probably the highest the trios title has ever been. However. AW, it, it it's hurting AEW to not have Kenny Omega in singles matches, and it's hurting them to not have the Young Bucks in singles matches because the ratings show people don't give a shit about trios matches. They're throwaway matches. They've always has been throwaway matches on Raw um, and SmackDown, and you know the people are accustomed to those being throwaway matches. Um, in Japan, I you know it, it's a little different. You can have six man matches that have that mean a lot. Um, but but even for that, that's a lot. That's rare. It, it's not a common thing. So I don't know. I, you know, here we are. We got one of the top three guys in the company tied up in in six man matches, and we got the Guns as tag team champs. So I don't know. I, I don't I don't like it. I don't like where we are right now. Um, 
and uh, we'll we'll see what happens in three weeks yeah. when the guns have to defend at the pay per view, whether it be against FTR or the acclaimed. They cannot hold it. That's all I'm saying. If they if they keep the titles, I I don't know. 2023 is not looking good if they do that. But no, and it's it's go away heat to me. It's you know them being on screen is is not that much worse than Vicky Guerrero coming out and screaming. <sighs> So I, I mean, I do, I will consider muting the TV when they're on and just not really paying attention because they're just not good. And I, I'm not interested in watching subpar talent being pushed because they're related to somebody. So I, I agree. And, and I think that the general consensus amongst the AEW faithful is this is not a popular choice. And Tony no. runs a face company. He wants to do what the audience wants. Yes, occasionally you have to have things like heels win or, you know, surprise wins, things of that nature. You have to do that. Keep people on their toes. Keep them guessing. I just think this was a misstep. A big one. But hopefully in a couple of weeks they'll lose it and maybe even next week. Maybe next week they get a rematch and they lose it immediately. (laughs) That would be fantastic and then we just move on. But right. Right. Loser uh, leaves ring match. Yep. Loser leaves AEW match and, yep. and they lose. Or better retirement match. They're <laughs> done forever. They barely have a career and they're getting a retirement match. That'd be uh, fine with me. <laughs> well, let's move on to the actual show now. I think we've given the, the guns enough airtime. Uh the show actually started with an amazing match, which was MJF versus again, one of my favorites. What are your favorites? Kanosuke Takeshita, and and once again, Takeshita proves he is top-tier talent. He has an amazing match with MJF. There were just some moves that, once again, MJF proves he's not just a talker. He legitimately can move in that ring, and he is good. And, you know, uh, I wanted Takeshita to win so that he could have a program with Max afterwards. Didn't happen. Another loss for Takeshita, but the fact is... He's not losing momentum at all. He could come out and never win for the next three months. He'll still be popular because he's he's that good. What did you think of the match? I thought it was an excellent match. Really enjoyed it. I love this spot where uh, Takeshita went to clothesline MJF on the ropes and he backflipped out of it. Um, Max is super athletic and he could flip all day if he wanted to, but... You know, he, he keeps that to, stuff to a minimum, and I, I think it makes it work. Cause it, it makes it that much better. Um, and I think it's, uh, you know, it, it kind of tells that story that, you know, some of the guys are doing too too much, uh, too much, you know, flying flying stuff. You know, every, every all their moves are jumping off the top ropes or planches. Or, but Max, Max uses it sparingly, and, and I think it, it, it makes it more impactful. Um, so I, I really enjoy his approach like, and all his matches are phenomenal. I uh, just can't say enough about MJF and how, you know, at any time he's on the screen, he's, he's hitting a home run. He's just, he's just that talented. He's a generational talent. And, uh, yeah, um, it was, it was excellent match. I was not surprised at the result at all. Um, it was a hard fought match. Um, Takeshita, this doesn't, him losing doesn't hurt him at all. No. Um, but he's, you know, he's continuing to get over and we'll see if maybe, you know, Don Callis might have something to say about his loss to MJF and, and to get Takeshi to start questioning his allegiance to Brian. So maybe that's what's in store for him after revolution. What I'd like to see from Takeshi is to get a title, not the world title, because obviously Max has got that locked up for now, but I'd like to see him maybe get the, uh, get the TNT title. Put him on every single week like they did with Darby, and he'll he's over. I mean, yep. he he did the Eddie shimmy, and El Paso blew up for him. Yep. He connects with the audience so well. That's why he's got the contract. That's why I'm a fan. That's why even though he's only done one promo in English, he's still connected with the fans, and they love him. Uh, he's amazing. I'd love to see him with a TNT title run. I think he's way above all Atlantic. He's absolutely mid to high card. Uh, you know, he's he's he could easily win the title and nobody would question it. But at this point, because he is still new in AEW, I see him winning something like the TNT title and 
just having a great face run as a, a great TNT champ. I, I'd love to see more of them. MJF is MJF, uh, as always. Phenomenal in the ring, phenomenal on the mic, great character work. He, he, he's elevating the title even more than where it was at from Moxley and Punk and everybody else. It's, this is the lineage right now. This lineage they're building with AEW is phenomenal for the world title. And I'm very excited to see where it goes. Now, after the match, MJF, of course, does his thing. He breaks uh, Takesh to open with the diamond ring. Uh, Danielson eventually comes down to make the save, which is good. Um, But, you know, again, post-match beatdown, nothing new for a heel. He did it just to bring out Danielson so he could, you know, show him up and run away. Uh, How could you deny the character work MJF is putting in? And, of course, Takeshita builds momentum every single match because he is so damn good. Uh, not only did they have the top rope backflip thing, which I thought was phenomenal. I made a gif of it and put it in the Discord because I loved it so much. But there were just so many other little things. And, and Max taking the, the arm bar and then doing a variation where he cranked that thing over his shoulder hard. Like a much different version of the salt of the earth that he put on that. So... I'm excited for, for Danielson, of course I am, versus MJF. And I think that this, as an opening, if you're going to start with the world champion, a match like this is definitely the way to go. Yeah, it's a great it's a great lead into Revolution. Uh, really, uh, really like how they're they're moving this along from week to week. It's not the same old challenge. Every every match seems fresh. You know, between the match that Brian had against Roosh last week or wait was that that that's later on that's later that's That's later later in the program yeah yeah so you know just kind of intertwining that stories and and then then having two incredible matches um you know and we'll we'll talk more about the roosh brian match but i i really like this program it's it's bringing us a lot of great wrestling and it's also appeasing the people who are are more story the fans who are more story focused so i think this is an excellent program and you got to say, you know, with MJF and, and Daniel Bryan kind of spearheading the creative on this and working with Tony and whoever else, um, they're 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 killing it. And it's a great program, and I can't wait for the Iron Man match at Revolution. I don't know who Daniel Bryan is, but Bryan Danielson is a phenomenal wrestler for AEW. Right. And right. I'm very glad that he left the land of the Giants and came to the land of pro wrestling because I'm a pro wrestling fan. I like... Sports entertainment, don't get me wrong. I love seeing a couple of giants go at it or a giant versus small guy. I love those matches. I watched WWE for 20, 30 years. But this is supposed to be the alternative, something different, something new. And the smaller guys, the flippy floppy guys, the 2023 dives out of the ring, that's what I'm looking for. I like that type of stuff. They didn't have a bunch of it in this match, but they did have it. You have to do dives. You have to do top rope stuff because that's the evolution of the sport. That's where it's going. But you could still be grounded. You could be a, a FTR. You could be no flips, all f- just fists. You could be the butcher and the blade. They don't do any top rope stuff. There's still plenty of opportunity for those types of guys. By the way, I think they, they made up a, a new version of FTR saying for butcher and blade. It's... Um, all gruff, no fluff. <laughs> I heard that uh, it was either Excalibur or Tony Schiavone said that one. And I'm like, that's good. All gruff, no fluff. I like it. So I think nice. there's there's still plenty of opportunity for, for some of these up and comers. It's just, I'm happy to see the evolution of the company. And I think MJF at the head as a pillar as an orig- as an AEW original, as somebody who before this company had never been on national TV, keep up with this. Keep up with this stuff specifically, and I'll keep watching. Um, so after the post match beatdown, we get a, a little promo from Samoa Joe talking about Wardlow and how he's basically just going to end him. I mean, it's it's a pretty good Joe match uh, promo talking about how their match is coming up. I mean, it was real simple. Didn't uh, yeah? Did they announce when they're going to fight? Are they going to fight on Dynamite next week? I I didn't hear. Uh, I assume it's going to be at Revolution. 
because okay. title match. But it's a TV title, so they may do it next week. They may do it between now and Revolution. I don't know. They Either they didn't say a specific time or neither one of us heard it. Okay. Well, it's, I mean, they made it clear that that's the, the you know, the next challenge to Joe is probably going to be Wardlow. So, right. um, and Wardlow's got to avenge getting the haircut. Um, I'm not sure how, you know, impactful that was if, uh, you know, if Joe had like sh- actually shaved like part of his head instead of cutting off that like annoying little ponytail or whatever it was, I think it might have been a different story. Man bun. Uh, it was a man bun. Right. Yeah, so um yeah, we'll we'll see. I I'm still a little disappointed that Darby lost um because I, you know, really enjoyed seeing him defend the, the TNT title. Those matches are always incredible. You can pull out you can pull anyone to face Darby and it's going to be an awesome, exciting hell of a match. Um he brings out the best in everybody um and kills himself in the process whereas, you know, a Joe match can be hit or miss. So I'm a when fan. A Wardlow match, well, when Wardlow has the TNT title, he, he does, he's not really on TV or doesn't have competitive matches, so I don't know. I, Joe, I, I like. I, just... I agree. I think Darby was a phenomenal champion. Give him a little bit of time off, come back. He's he's certainly upper mid card, uh, lower t- lower top tier. He's he's a phenomenal phenomenal 170 pound wrestler. Um, Wardlow as champion was boring. And Samoa Joe at least is a little bit more interesting. I'm kind of tired of Joe versus Wardlow. I hope that this is the last time and they move on. And I really hope Wardlow doesn't win because I don't want to see him as champion. Or a Wardlow win by something like DQ or Countout where he doesn't get the title. I'd be okay with that. I like the king of all television. I like that character. I like the way Joe comes across just as that badass heel. So... I just hope to see more of that and a lot less of whatever the hell Wardlow was doing with with Elmo's world or whatever. It was, <laughs> oh, he just, he's green and he needs some development and that wasn't cutting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we move on to the next segment, which was Bunny versus Jamie Hayter in a championship match. Uh, it wasn't a championship challenger match like some of the others. This was a full-on championship match. And most of us assume that it was cut short because there was a move that Jamie Hayter did, and then she did it again. She did, like, the same move. It was like a, a front face suplex or something. I don't remember what it was. But she basically landed on Bunny. She got up. Bunny was still laying there. The ref was over her. She kicked Bunny in the stomach. And Bunny didn't move. And I'm like, oh, she didn't sell anything. That's not good. Then Jamie Jamie picked her up, hit the ripcord uh, hater aid, the ripcord lariat, pinned her, done. And the camera never showed Bunny again. Except for briefly when Hater was walking up the ramp and you saw Bunny being escorted out by a bunch of the medical staff. I hope she's okay. It was a good, but it was short. Uh, Bunny's got great character work. She just got back from being injured. I really, really hope that she didn't get hurt too badly. It definitely looked like an injury that cut that match short. And that's why we got the MGF program a little later, just or uh, promo, just to get some airtime filled because that match went short. So here's a question for you. How old do you think Bunny is? Um, I believe she's early 30s or late 20s. 35. Wow. Well, you got to look at her husband, Blade. Blade's got all the gray in his beard, so I know he's late 30s, early 40s. He's like 41, 42. Mm -hmm. And so uh, her being 35, 36 makes perfect sense. She's also, she was in Impact for a long time. She's, She's been in wrestling for a long time. She's not green. Um, so 35 does surprise me, but she comes across as very youthful. She's got a a great look and her character is getting over more and more. She's got the little crazy eyes and I like bunny, but I just hope she's not hurt badly. She clearly was hurt though. Yeah. She missed about six months last year. I don't remember exactly what the injury was, but I know she loves wrestling. I remember when uh, she first started with, you know, she switched over to, to join the butcher and the blade. 
she didn't she didn't wrestle because she was just kind of being the valet and, and causing and raising hell outside the ring supporting her team um but she would post on twitter i want to wrestle i want to wrestle and i always just thought that was you know that was cool her expressing her desire to want to to be more than just a manager yeah so to see someone who wants to perform that much you know in in the ring and to also see someone who outdrew roman reigns i don't know if, if you remember when the bunny segment uh, went against the Roman Reign Roman Reign segment, and the bunny actually outdrew Roman. That was a big joke for a while. Uh, that must have been ago. that must have been that one time where there was the overlap, where they yeah, were like, they were... "We're going commercial free." So Tony's like, "Okay, I'll do commercial free too." Yeah. So so the bunny outdrew Roman. So yeah, I I hope she's okay and, and she can get back soon. Yeah. Um. She's she's had some fun matches and uh, yeah. She's a she's also from Buffalo. Um, she's a Buffalo kid and, uh, I'm also from Buffalo. If, if I, if that wasn't known, if, if you're listening and you didn't know where, where me, where JV is from. Um, so I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of the butcher, the blade Garcia and the bunny, uh, because they're, they're locals. I understand. And of course, because this is the only time you get four women, the very next segment was Soraya and Tony storm doing their thing talking about the AEW homegrown, and then they called over Leva Bates, blue pants. I'm so sorry to see she got beat up, and then they spray-painted her. But it's just an L. I mean, I like the NWO. I like the LWO. I, I enjoy the spray-painting spot as a wrestling gimmick. But what's the L mean? Oh, it means loser. loser. Yeah, whatever. You didn't say it last week. You just spray painted an L on the Renegades. Now it means loser. I don't know. Um, again, Soraya has not caught on very well. She's dragging Tony down with her. Tony keeps trying. Don't get me wrong. I love Tony Storm, and I hope she keeps you know her momentum. But these segments with Soraya do something already. Just I don't know. I don't know. But this is the women's time, so they got the bunny match with Jamie Hayter, and then they got the Soraya, and that's it for the women. We don't hear from women at all the rest of the show. So Leva Bates was still clinging to her her librarian gimmick with the books. Uh, she got beat down. She dropped a couple of books on the floor. So, so she's still holding on to that librarian gimmick a little bit. Well, okay, so... She kept the librarian gimmick after she kicked Peter to the curb. But if you watch right. BTE, you know they've been married, got divorced, been married again. Uh, there's just all. I like Leva. I love her interactions with Avalon in the in BTE. I, I liked her as Blue Pants back in NXT. I like her now. She doesn't need to wrestle. She is major backstage. She took over for Brandy in the uh, the outreach. No. That was Amanda who took over for the outreach. She took over in, in a lot of the branding and a lot of the corporate stuff. She really stepped up backstage, and I love her for that. Uh, you know, get her on screen. She's not a fantastic wrestler. She puts her heart into it. And, you know, they spray painted her. Cool. At least she was on TV. I got to hang out with Leva a little bit at uh, the, the original StarCast oh. uh, before the All In show in, in, in Chicago um that basically led to AEW being formed um mm -hmm. so leva was a judge for the fire pro wrestling celebrity tournament mm -hmm. so um i i won that tournament i won a, a mill dave milliken a genuine dave milliken designed um championship title which is super nice very cool and uh, leva cheered me on as i beat ron funches um <laughs> bruce pritchard um, Noel Foley, and who was the last person? There was four people. Um, Sounds like you had quite a tournament that you got to beat up on some some serious uh, celebrities. Ron Funches. Yeah, Funches um, was actually beating me in Fire Pro because I I'm kind of a Fire Pro rookie. I had just bought the game, and. Um, I wasn't prepared to to be in the tournament to play Fire Pro. It just happened to happened to work out that way, and uh, yeah. So I was I was fighting front Funches. I'm using Kenny Omega. We're in the finals, and uh, oh, Sammy Callahan was the fourth. Oh, there it is. Sammy was the fourth fourth. Uh, no, actually, I didn't fight Sammy in the tournament. I think I fought his girlfriend. 
um, who's actually fights in in Impact, but I can't remember her name. I don't. I, don't, I, I mean, yeah. I know who he is, but I'm not a follower of Impact. Yeah. So, so Funches was was beating me. It was probably like sixty forty, and I'm getting concerned. I'm like, I can't lose a celebrity tournament. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the gamer here, and Funches, who's obviously played more Fire Pro than me. Um, so I got the upper hand with Omega. I hit a few moves. I think I dumped him on his head with the OWA, but it was early. So, but instead of kicking out, he hit the PlayStation button on the controller, which took it to the menu. Yeah. And because of that, the game runs in the background and I pinned him (laughs) in the background. (laughs) So, Oh, well that's, you know, that's a win. And so I'm assuming he probably played Fire Pro on the Xbox, so you know the controller probably threw him off, and and um, yeah, but I'm 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 thankful that I didn't lose to Ron Funches, and uh, he was gracious enough to concede the, the victory. And Leva said, "Well, you're the one who hit the pause button, so we so it's your fault, you know. So we we you know he's the winner. <laughs> so well, she was the judge. Um, That's the way it works. And the, the crowd was chanting bullshit, and I'm oh. like, hey, I'm not I'm not going to offer to do the match over." <laughs> Nor should you. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to lose that title. So, but anyhow, yeah, she, Levy was super cool, and I met her at a show in. I was in Oakland for work, and um, she was at a some indie show and uh, some glam, glam or something it was called, and um, yeah, I hung out with her at that show, and we talked for probably like 20 minutes. It was. She's just. She's just pretty. She's just awesome. She's such a cool character. Doesn't surprise um, me. And, she uh, seems. She yeah. seems really down to earth. Just really. You know, she just seems like a cool person. I'm glad to hear that reports are behind the scenes. She just, she's just cool. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then we moved on to the next segment, which was MJF talking about Takeshita, and uh, that wasn't the was that the driving promo? No, I think it was the driving promo. Okay. So well, he did he did come out. And, yeah, he came out. I think the yeah that promo was after the. And it might have been improvised because of the injury. Right. And they had some extra time. So they're just like, uh, what do we do? Uh, cut to MJF. He'll figure something out. And he did. He told a story about being in high school as a jock, uh, which is funny because those same guys were throwing quarters and pennies at him and bullying him. Now suddenly he's best friends with them. So I find it interesting that he'll tell a story use the same people in a totally different way to make whatever point he's trying to make. So he starts talking about how he's got this car, which he showed pictures of later. He showed a picture of the car where he would drive it around. He had a bunch of tickets. He only had one point left on his license. And then he and his friends go to the prom. He picks up a girl. He name drops Liv because he knew the response that would get. Uh, Goes out driving around in the car she's the the phrase i used was unseen under the dashboard so she had her head in his lap he was driving he got distracted crashed the car he wakes up covered in blood sees her checks that she's breathing then swaps seats so that he doesn't get in trouble and then turns that into that's why you're never going to win Daniel uh, Danielson because I'm willing to do what it takes. I'll do anything to win. You don't have the, you know, you don't have the wherewithal. You're not uh winner. You know, you won't do anything to win. I, I didn't know where the story was going, but once he got there and turned it into the actual promo, it was pretty amazing. Um, for filling time with a promo out of nowhere, he's the champion there's a reason he was really good. I mean, it was, it turned into a really good promo at the end. Um, just very odd sort of way to get there, but very MJF way to get there. What'd you think of the segment? So there were apparently the police department said 300 people (laughs) called and said MJF committed a crime, um, for, you know, switching the unconscious body into the driver's seat. So he didn't get charged with an accident, potentially felony reckless. Yeah. So that was interesting that that people you know don't understand statute of limitations. People don't under people still think that wrestling is real, or maybe like one or two people just called as a prank and the police department turned it into something that it wasn't. Who knows? Um, 
so that was interesting. Another thing, you know, the response to this was, you know, we just had, yeah. you know, Jay Briscoe pass in a car accident. Now is not the time. Let's at least let the shock from that die down a little bit before we do an angle with that involves car accident. I, I agree um, with that sentiment. As you well know, I'm not a huge Briscoe fan, but the dude died. So I'm not going to hold, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be respectful. MJF using a car crash in his promo literally a week after, you know, they, they did that for, for Mark, uh, for, for Jay's, uh, memorial, maybe a week, two weeks. I don't remember. The, the fact is I thought it was in poor taste for that, but I mean, you know, high school car crash, nobody got hurt realistically, not as big a deal, but I totally understand where people are coming from, why they'd be upset at it. It's... And the other, some of the other feedback was the whole, the whole skit was based on Pearl Jam's song, Last Kiss. Okay, so I read up on that. Right. And that's just a car accident with a girlfriend. I'm sorry. Oh, it's... Where, oh, where can my baby be? The Lord took her. All right, it's yeah. kind of singing pot. The, no, it, it's not, but good rendition. Um, I mean, we all kind of not all, but I know the song a little bit. You, eh, I don't see the relation, but I could see how people can make the connection. They also called the police department. So, you know, the the watchers of wrestling are not always the most intellectual, and I include myself in that. That said, moving on to the next segment, we got. Probably the worst gauntlet match I've ever seen. <laughs> and that was the Garcia Guevara gauntlet. And that was, of course, uh, Ricky Starks trying to defeat three men in a row so that he could face Chris Jericho all in the same night. Four matches in the same night. Yeah. Uh, so he really just took care of 2.0. Menard and and Angelo, gone. They They were no time at all. At least Garcia had some time in the ring before the match ended. Uh, you know, they did the big distraction thing where who's going to start? Who's going to start? Who's going to start? And they used it to get the upper hand, beat him down, got the advantage, kept the advantage. Stark had a little bit of a comeback. And then out of the crowd, because he had been sitting there the entire night, some fan in a mask. Hits the Judas effect right on Starks, knocks him out. Garcia gets the win. Turns out that was Chris. So the gauntlet match, Starks loses, doesn't get to face Jericho. Good. He already beat him. Doesn't need to. And what the hell was the point? Ooh, Jericho was yeah, a bad the, guy. And the whole thing was horrible. I mean, I I, I... You want people in a faction to be viewed as legitimate wrestlers, and then you have 2.0, both of them. Like I, I feel like those guys I haven't seen them wrestle, you know, in a long time. Um, I know they were both. I think they were both hurt, and maybe they're not even cleared, and that's why uh, they were just on dark and elevation. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, Menard is is I, I enjoy his announcing most of the time on on dark. Yeah. Um. I. I, I think he's decent at that, but you know, just to bring him in and job the guy out in 10 seconds. Come on. Well, it's it, losses like that hurt credibility. And the next time you try to book them in a main event, people are going to say, why the, why would I want to watch that? Yeah. I don't, you have some jobber out here and you know, I definitely don't I, see I, him in the main event anytime soon. No. Right. Especially not after that. No. And even the next time they're in a five on five, you're gonna you're gonna question. Well, you know, here you have these two jobbers that lose to Ricky Starks in ten seconds. Why, why should I care about this match when it's basically a five on three? Um, so, I mean, keep your guys strong. And I don't I don't know what went wrong with the gauntlet thing. I thought that was hilarious. You said it was the, the worst gauntlet you ever saw. Yeah, it was probably the worst gauntlet match in the history of wrestling because usually they're pretty damn good, and you have the. You know, you have the face going up against all the odds, and he squeaks out a few victories before eventually succumbing to to someone, or even winning, but, overcoming yeah. the odds and winning. Yeah. Either either yeah. way, a good gauntlet match takes a long time, and so they were like, "We're going to do three matches, and then if you win all three, you're going to get a fourth match in the same night." No, right, and a two hour show. Yeah, that's still got Roosh and Brian. 
Yeah. So now see and if, the trio, the elite had if, the, the match. If that's they, not going to be a short match. If they had done Menard and and Angelo as you know, they're maybe a couple minutes each. They both get beat as a team, and then next week we find out about is it Garcia? You know, we have that match. And then if he wins the next week after that or the pay-per-view, he gets, okay, spread it out. Now the matches have a little bit more impact. Sure, they can still lose, but maybe they get to look better than a 10-second loss. I don't know who this who this gauntlet was supposed to help. It yeah, didn't. Was I it like... supposed to help Ricky? Because it didn't. Was it supposed to help the 2.0? It didn't. Was it supposed to help Garcia? Maybe a little, but it took Jericho to win. And Jericho looks completely weak. What was that? I did like Jericho being in the crowd and hitting the Judas effects. That was cool. I thought that was funny. Um, You know, and it led to the win. So, I mean, I I, Jericho just got back from his cruise. I don't know if that had something to do with it. They just didn't have time to rehearse or whatnot or to put a plan together. But, hey, it, it was a miss. It happens. Let's move on. Yeah. So that that was that, and Garcia lost, and Jericho stood tall. Yay. Right. Uh, next, we move backstage. Uh, Billy Gunn basically says that uh, he's not coming out. That that his two adopted kids and his two normal his two natural kids are just going to fight it out without him. Okay, I'm okay with that decision. They didn't stick with it, but I'm okay with a decision like that because he's like, I'm done with you both. I'm out. So he takes a step out. I'm okay with that segment. I wish they had kept it, but they didn't. Uh, the next segment, I mean, what what did you think about it? It was a quick segment with Billy Gunn. I was glad to hear that he wasn't coming out because I, I thought it lowered the chances of a swerve, which is what I did not want to see. Mm-hmm. Um, but, of course, you knew he was going to come out anyway, so it didn't really matter. But, yeah, I, I think it, it added some drama to the match. At Like, at what point is he going to get involved? Mm-hmm. So I guess it was fine. It, it, it was a little segment. It did its point. Good enough, I guess. Yeah. Um, after that, uh, backstage, it was Danielson being interviewed by Renee with Takeshita standing there. And they're talking a little bit about the upcoming uh, match with Roosh. And the next thing you know, somebody slams the door, locks it, and starts to bar it somehow, and you hear giggling, laughing, and some Mex- and some Spanish. Clearly, Jose the assistant has locked him in, and so they start pretending that they can't actually get out. So MJF comes down, Roosh is waiting in the ring, Aubrey Edwards is forced, because those are the rules, to start counting. And she counts very, very slowly which is fine she's basically a face ref anyways i i have no issue whatsoever with with the way she she did her part uh danielson breaks out of the room using his shoulder so that adds into the you know the shoulder injury he's had races out of the room races down to the ring and gets in just in time to start the match against roosh um i'm a big fan of roosh i like what he's doing I like the way he presents himself. He's had some good matches. He's doing some some better promos in English. He's had great matches. I, I love his character. What did you think of the match? I thought it was one of the most hard-hitting matches in AEW history. Like, those two guys killed each other. <laughs> You're only saying uh, that because Danielson's chest was red as a beat. Yeah, well, and the blood. Sure. And just the strikes and the kicks and it was it was definitely one of the hardest hitting matches i've ever seen you got two guys who can dish it out and two guys who can take who are willing to take more punishment than most in, in the business most in in the history of wrestling i think you can put these two guys up there as as two of the toughest that will take a pounding in the ring um it was it was impressive it was a spectacle i need to go back and rewatch it again so i can appreciate it um but yeah phenomenal match um start to finish it was it was incredible and you know there was a ton of blood too like brian you know i, I was concerned he might pass out there was so much blood he but bled solid so, match all around he bled so much some of it ended up on the camera 
I mean, he was bleeding like crazy. And yeah, it was a hard-hitting match. They slapped the crap out of each other. They punched the crap out of each other. They kicked the crap out of each other. Danielson, as always, this is what he came... This is what he left WWE for. Hard-hitting, bloody, brutal wrestling matches where he gets to show the world that he really is one of the best to ever lace up the boots. He was phenomenal. I loved this match. It was um, Roosh's best match in AEW. Uh, he, I love his fake out when he charges, stops, and then does a little fake kick uh, because his actual finish right now is charging, planting both boots when you're in the corner doing a sort of cannonball move. They call it the horns of the bull, which I love. I'm a Taurus, and uh, maybe that's a reason why I like El Toro Blanco. <laughs> he he's he's really coming across well as a good heel. He tried to take Danielson's blood and lick it, and Aubrey stopped that. She's like, "No, I thought that was a good spot." Uh, these guys play off each other really well. I agree. They could have this type of pay per view quality match anywhere in the world and be well received. Once again, Danielson puts on a pay per view quality match. Every time he's in the ring, it's pay-per-view quality. The dude is the goat, the boat. You call him what you will. He is the top-tier wrestler. And when MJF beats him, not if, when MJF beats him, it's going to cement MJF as the up-and-coming generational talent. Uh, I don't see Danielson winning. I don't see how it's going to play out. There's going to be shenanigans. There has to be. Is it the diamond ring? Is it outside? Is it this, that, or the other thing? I don't know. Whatever happens, I know Danielson is going to put on a phenomenal match with MJF. They are two incredible talents. Much like this match with Roosh, I think it's going to be really hard-hitting. And I just can't wait for it. Danielson, of course, came out with the win. Afterwards, MJF came down. Hits him with the ring again. Hits him with the salt of the earth again. Security comes down, breaks it up. No Takeshita to save him, which was odd, but so be it. Uh, Great match. Once again, Roosh proves that he is uh, what Andrade thought he was going to be. He's he's good and has a great personality and apparently a great work rate and attitude backstage. Everything Andrade wanted to be, but isn't. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see where Roosh goes from here. Who's he gonna Who's he gonna feud with next? Are we gonna get a, a Roosh versus Takeshita feud? Um, because okay. that would be that would be a lot of fun. Um, those two have never squared off. They were in a battle royal together, but <clears throat> but Roosh and Takeshita have never fought, and they would have a hell of a match, a hell mm-hmm. of a program if mm-hmm. they were gonna go against each other. So. Yeah, it'll be real interesting to see where they go from here. Um, I don't agree that MJF is a lock to win at Revolution. <laughs> I think, I think, I mean, well, after the tag team fiasco, I, I, I'm not sure how much Tony Khan cares about title lineage. But if he did, having Daniel Bryan be your champion um, at least once uh, is, is something I would want. And da- Daniel you know, Bryan doesn't work for him. Um, (laughs) you keep talking about this wrestler. I haven't heard about this wrestler in a couple of years. He left WWE. He must be with, he's in, he's with El Generico working the, uh, working the, uh, the orphanage. I'll say what CM Punk said. I, I'll just call him dragon from now on. Yeah. There you go. And uh, I'll call them out for, for saying Brian Danielson. Um, it's hard. It's hard. I I called him, I called him Daniel Bryan for so many years. It happens. Yeah, I usually just refer to him as Brian because I always say it wrong. Um, so <laughs> when he first showed up in AEW, I called him Brian Dan or what was it? It was Daniel Bryan. I called him Daniel Brian Danielson <laughs> because you know Brian Danielson's his real name. Daniel Bryan was his fake name, so Daniel Bryan Danielson. But he's... but yeah, I think he'll. Uh, yeah, I think it would be wise to put him on that title lineage. So if Brian wins it. 
and then loses it back in a month or at the at the next pay per view to MJF to let MJF continue. That wouldn't surprise me too much. Yeah. So um, I don't think it's a lock. I think the match is going to be interesting. I do think MJF's going to win. I think Brian's going to have to. I don't know. I could see Brian beating maybe the next champion, um, whoever that might be. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's going to be a hell of a match. I'm looking forward to the pay per view. Uh, I I think that it's way too early for MJF to lose, but you never know. TK could just get a wild hair and give it to to Brian Danielson because he is the greatest, <laughs> and <laughs> nobody would argue with him being a, a title holder. Um, I I do think Daniel is going to win the title eventually. Um, I don't think it's going to be Revolution. <clears throat> That's just my opinion because I think uh, it's still too early. I think MJF is building his legacy with this first title run. And I'd like to see him be champion for a little bit longer. Yeah. I'm like 70, 30 MJF wins, okay. but it's a possibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> now the next segment, it was all corporate synergy. I found absolutely no interest in it. I hate impractical jokers. Murray and Quinn don't know anything about them. I know that Jericho was on their show. They're having some little back and forth. They stole Jericho's bat, whatever. Are you a fan of Impractical Jokers? I know some people are. I don't even know who they are, so okay. I have no, I have no interest or any comments on that on that whole whole thing. They I they do some silly TV show where basically all they do is they put somebody uh, with like a little Bluetooth headset or you know wireless earplug or whatever, and tell them to do really stupid shit, and people look at them and act awkward. And I just I don't find humor in that sort of stuff. So I've never watched it, never going to watch it. And they have yeah, a really boring ass segment. Yeah. I don't watch any of that, re any reality TV stuff. I mean, I'll watch stuff like stranger things, game of Thrones, uh, last of us, you know, some of the like quality HBO stuff, but just for like general stuff on TV is, is I'm not, I'm not going to be watching it. So I'll watch cooking competitions, but I won't watch this and jackass. Impractical Jokers and Jackass to me are the same sort of sophomoric mentality that you have when you're like 20. Right. And I haven't been 20 for 30 years. <laughs> right. So not a segment for us. I don't think it did well in the ratings. I just corporate synergy. Yay. That's about all I can say. Um, yeah. Next up, probably my favorite match of the night well hard to say um it's difficult for me to say that it's not the best match because i love ar fox and top flight it was the trios championship against the elite you know i love the elite um i i think that once again top flight showed why at 20 and 21 22 they're they're really young why they are a phenomenal tag team and they will be champions one day uh, A.R. Fox is a little bit older, but again, he is phenomenal. He takes to the air as well as the uh, as Top Flight, as the Martin Brothers. And of course, we know Omega and the Young Bucks are phenomenal talents. There were a couple of spots that I absolutely loved. Dante Martin normally does this flip off the rope, sort of a, a dodge. People run at him, he flips, and he lands. Oftentimes, he does a move, his brother comes off the ropes again, does the flatliner. In this match, not only did he do the dodge off the ropes, but then a second later he dodged, it was either Matt or Nick or whatever, he dodged again without the ropes, just did a, just did a standing flip. Just going to stand and flip. I don't know what he does, but he levitates sometimes. AR Fox is pretty good too. When he went over the ropes, you could just see he, he, he like stalled for a second right at the arc of the arch of the arc of the parabola right at the top and then flipped over i'm like man these guys are so good uh, another phenomenal match with the bucks and kenny omega of course because they're the elite and they are the best in the world um at what they do uh, i thought it was a great trios match of course the bucks and, and omega won it's definitely not time to lose it yet but man ar Fox deserves all of his acclaim, all of his accolades. And again, top flight, you know, I love them. The Martin brothers, they put on a phenomenal match. 
dives and ropes and flips and flippy doo all day long. I love that shit. Flippy wrestling for life. What'd you think of the match? <laughs> I would, I would have rather been watching Jeff Jarrett, you know, hit someone with a guitar, but no uh, it's, way. It's, really? It's, it's Kenny in the buck. So I guess we'll take it. Um, no, it was, a, it was a good defense. It had been built up over a couple weeks. Um, it's, it's kind of Kenny's foray back into the mix after missing a few weeks due to alleged visa issues. Um, you know, good to see the Bucks kind of avenge their loss against the, the Martins. Mm-hmm. Um, Kenny and AR Fox had a really good sequence. It was almost like a singles match between mm-hmm. those two amidst the chaos. And it was an interesting finish. I was kind of shocked that, that Kenny, you know, won that match with a roll up. Like Kenny Omega just doesn't usually win matches with roll ups. He'll take a rare loss with a roll up, but for him to win with the roll up is pretty rare. Um, it speaks to the, to... it speaks to the strength of the, the AR Fox top flight team. I yeah. think that's why and, they did AR it. Fox specifically. Yeah. It, it was a nod to AR Fox. Oh yeah. Um, because I think Kenny appreciates, you know, the amount of time that AR Fox has put into his career the time he spent training other wrestlers yeah. and at 35, you know, is finally getting his break to be on, on TV is, is pretty awesome. I mean, I don't know his history or why he never went to WWE or if he just said no, or if they weren't interested, but um, yeah, great to see him get some, some TV time. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see what's next for uh, Kenny and the Bucks. You have to think that whatever they do next is going to lead to their, their match at revolution and i'm hoping it's house of black because that's oh. that would be awesome i'd love to see kenny finally square off against buddy murphy i would just <laughs> love to see it because you know that kenny is gonna give buddy murphy some receipts for buddy using his moves so sure, you're gonna see some nasty v triggers no and doubt no murphy doubt will probably hit him with a few of his own so I'd, I'd love to see that match. I'd love to see the dynamics between Brody King and the and the Bucks and Kenny and and Murphy and Malachi. I think it would be incredible. I'm hoping that's what we get. Anything other than that, I think, is going to be average right now. I don't, I don't I, know I don't of really... any trios that are of the same caliber as House of Black. I mean, best friends, whatever. I mean, Kenny has fought Chuck Taylor and Trent a million times. He, I, I believe he's only fought... Orange Cassidy once or twice. The the triple threat um, with Pac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The that one main event I was referring to, um, but like I, I don't. There there really is nobody else right now. No, that, that is. So hopefully House of Black and hopefully House of Black wins. Yeah. I'm ready for Kenny and the Bucks to move on from the trios title. Um, I'd like to see House and, of Black get some accolade. I'd like to see them have some matches. I'd like to see yeah. them be dominant. Right, I'd like to see them actually be used and actually fight on TV. Um, I, I because they're awesome. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that's what happens. Yeah. Um, House of Black over, over the Elite at at Revolution would be pretty cool. Now so. there was a spot I wanted to bring up because I don't think I've seen it before, and it was Matt Jackson. He was in the ring. He was against Ar Fox. He had Ar Fox. He was starting a pin move. And then the Martin brothers run over to him. He grabbed them. He ended up pinning three guys at yeah. the same time. I was like, "What?" With the Northern Lights. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Into the Northern Light Suplex while bridging the one guy. Yeah, it was like he had Ar Fox folded over for the one pin, and then like a dual Northern Lights uh, suplex for the other two. I was like, "My God, that's." tough and it was he he, i mean he pinned three guys at the same time and he didn't have them stacked up like a monster would so i thought that was great there there were so many individual spots again as always Uh, you could just go through the entire match and say that was great that was great that was great they're the elite of course they're great and the martin brothers and ar fox are a phenomenal trio they won the trio you know they had momentum built they won the three hundred thousand dollar trios match thing a few weeks ago on Rampage. They've had televised wins as a trio against other teams. They had momentum, so when they they had a win against the Bucks, so when they came in, they were legitimate. You were like they could conceivably win these titles, and a couple of times I bit. I thought they might. 
unlike the guns. So they would complete dichotomy, complete difference in how you build people with A.R. Fox and the Martin brothers just blowing everybody out of the water and getting the winds to build the momentum versus the guns. So I'm okay with the win, the, the Bucks keeping the titles, Omega, the elite keeping the titles. That's great. Uh, I don't know who they fight next. I don't know what their next program is. But House of Black, hell yeah, let's do it. Give them the titles. Yeah, and I guess the other the other thing, I, I I have no idea what the card is for Rampage. I didn't do my homework uh, before the show tonight because <laughs> I was busy with work stuff. Um, so I, I don't know what's coming for Rampage. Um, I mean, I, I guess I'm curious is, uh, you know, there, there's been no sign of Keith Lee. I was hoping to see Keith Lee come back and, and, and fight Swerve at the pay-per-view, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. And um, what about Hobbs? Was Hobbs going to be on Rampage? Is he going to be fighting? I didn't, I, you know, I didn't see any of the previews. I didn't pay attention. I'm sure he is. They've been pushing Hobbs like crazy. He's. He it's, but he hasn't been on, been fighting on TV or, or like interacting with anybody. Um, he's, he had a couple squash matches. Um, he's done dark and elevation, of course, cause that's where you farm wins. Uh, you know, it's just right. little stuff, but. They've talked about him, and and I think he's got a slow push coming. So I'd like to see him in the pay-per-view, but who knows? It's probably going to be another 97-hour pay-per-view, so he's going to have the entire roster available. Yeah, and I think he might shorten it up because you're going to have, have an, a one-hour Iron Man match. So, so maybe that's why we're not seeing some of these guys is because there's just no spots for him at this, this upcoming show. Maybe, maybe. Um, so the, the next bit was a hook video followed by Stokely Hathaway talking smack about hook followed by hook showing up and breaking his arm. He did. He broke his arm. Stokely po posted that he, that hook broke his arm and he doesn't, he doesn't want to take TK to litigation, but he did post a picture of him next to, um, it wasn't Don King. God damn it. Don King. I'm trying to think who who did he t he had a picture of a very famous uh, activist prosecutor. Who am I thinking of? Oh my god! Talk amongst yourselves for a second. I got to look this up. It's killing me. All right. But Hathaway had a picture. Okay. So while you're looking up that that Hathaway picture, so what I'm seeing for for Rampage on Friday, we got Orange Cassidy versus Lee Moriarty. Which, you know, is just not. Well, Lee Moriarty's okay. Chris, so yeah, we're he's okay on dark. Um, we're gonna hear from Mark Briscoe. Um, yeah. Some people are saying he might retire. I I don't know. They're gonna retire the titles. From what I understand, they're gonna just bring out different ROH titles, and they are the last of that lineage, which is good. Um, but I don't know. I I don't think he's gonna retire as a wrestler. I don't. He's he's building a, the the singles momentum, so I really hope that he sticks around, so that he can get a little bit more of that uh, momentum of that fan appreciation that he so deserves. Oh, Al yeah, Sharpton, we'll that's who it was. It was Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton. Okay. So Don he, King, Al Sharpton. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, Don King is the promoter. Al Sharpton is the activist lawyer. Um, right. But, yeah, he, he has a broken arm, showed it in the cast. So he's really serious. I guess Hook is now going to be uh, uh, feuding with the firm. Okay. I mean, we know that he and Big Bill are having a bit of a confrontation already. So Hook versus the firm with possibility of more Jungle Boy. I guess that's okay. Okay. But yeah, um, yeah, we'll see. If they're setting up Hook for a match against someone at, at the pay per view. That'll the match will go two minutes and you know typical Hook stuff. So the other matches on Rampage. So I'll, I'll start at the top. This sure. is what we got to look forward to on Friday: Orange Cassidy versus Lee Moriarty. Mm. Um, Frisco interview. Ruby Soho versus Marina Shafir, and Vicky Guerrero. Well, Vicky's just on the on the picture. She's not actually fighting. I know you're disappointed about that. I know how you love your Vicky Guerrero matches. Oh, well, fortunately, she hasn't wrestled since like 2012. The last time Jungle she had... Boy, 
Right. The last time she had what a match, it was against Stephanie McMahon, and it was in a, a it was like a mud wrestling match or something. It was I'm terrible. That because I, I swear she was in a match in AEW. No, she was. She absolutely was. She was in it with Nyla. I don't think she did anything. She stood on the the ringside, but that wasn't really her in a match. That was just her standing there. Yeah, she had. It was Nyla and Vicky against Britt and the Rebel. That was Dynamite ninety one. That was one of the worst Dynamites I think. Actually, no, it actually did have some good matches. Um, but I, I don't want to get lost in the in the weeds talking about that. <laughs> the other match on Rampage was Jungle Boy is in action, so he'll be fighting an, an unnamed opponent. Maybe Christian shows mm. up with stores, but I think we would have heard about that already if it happened. Um, Not for Rampage. It just sounds like maybe a jobber. Right, right. But I'm just saying maybe they show up on the show and like attack Jungle Boy after the match or something. Maybe. Um, but I think we would have heard about it if that happened because something like that would have probably leaked. Cause that would be considered a big return. Yeah. Um, but the other match is, looks like it's going to be Blackpool Combat Club with Mox, Claudio, and, and Yuta against Kip Sabian, the Butcher, and the Blade. Which is fine. I like BCC. I, I like and, Kip, Butcher, and Blade. Should be a good match. Maybe uh, maybe Mox, Claudio, and Yuta are going to be the challengers for... Uh, for the, for, for the trios? For the elites. Well, that that would be interesting because Claudio and Yuta are already UA, uh, ROH champions. Right. And, right. If, and then Mox could have fight Hangman, I would assume, at the at Revolution. Oh, sure. See, there you go. Yeah. We, we, we put... What we do is we put all the belts on the BCC. So we've already got the ROH title and the pure title. What we do is we give them the trios title, take it from Cage and those guys. Then the tag titles, uh, Mark Briscoe and a partner of his choice lose to call it Mox and Claudio. Then we bring in a woman. I don't know who, maybe uh, Layla Hirsch. And she comes in and she takes the women's title. Uh, not from Jamie Hayter, because I like her. Maybe maybe she's the one who, who finally beats Jade. And she gets the, the accolades from that. Honestly, I don't really care about ROH. Their titles are complete junk to me. Um, hopefully, they get their streaming service up and going. Because I think that's what's the big thing. They have some tapings coming up. Let them get off of my... See, they're they're doing ROH on Dark and Elevation, and I'm okay with it there. I saw Dalton Castle, and I saw The Boys. I, I thought Dalton Castle was great. I thought The Boys had good personality. Fantastic. Keep them on Dark and Elevation until ROH gets up and running. I just, I'm tired of all these ROH guys in AEW. And so, even though I like Claudio and I like Yuta, the fact that they're champions in ROH doesn't mean much to me. It means they might get a match at the pay-per-view and they might get a match on darker elevation. Just keep, I don't know. Uh, that that yeah. whole ROH thing just is not working the way I thought it would. Yeah, Tony tried to get an ROH TV deal. It didn't happen. Um, he's going to, you know, it's going to be part of the streaming service, which is something. And I think, I think it'll be profitable. But yeah, I'm just glad he's done cannibalizing AEW with ROH stuff. Um, you know, he said he was going to cut way down on that, and he has, and he's, he's yep. kept his word. Yep. Um, and I, you know, I, I, what's interesting to me is ratings haven't really changed that much since he cut out all the ROH stuff. And now you got the elite back. Um, Brian's fighting more. Um, but the ratings haven't really, you know, bumped over a million consistently if at all, lately. So the ROH stuff, I think you could say it hasn't hurt. But I think morale is, is, is like on Twitter for the hardcore fans, is definitely much higher right now than it was when all the ROH stuff was getting mixed in. I mean, okay. So do I think that things have gotten better? Yes. Um, ROH isn't as frequent. People are, are happy. Er, uh, you're never get, going to get happy people on Twitter. But the, the most important, I don't know. I, I just, 2023 has been a weird mix. And yeah, they've had some good ratings. They've been a near million, over a million. The Mark Briscoe, uh, Jay Briscoe tribute, that got over a million. 
I, that's not really a big marker. I don't think a million is just an arbitrary number people are using. I certainly don't think that, that Warner Brothers Discovery, TNT, TBS, I don't think any of those guys care about the million because AEW is still their highest rated shows. Still bringing in better than the NHL that they paid much more for and kicked them off the, the, the station. So right. could you imagine as spread thin as Tony is now him buying WWE and trying to run ROH WWE and AEW simultaneously. Plus if he were to buy WWE back to the monopoly. Right. I would not want that to happen. No. Nope. Um, it just wouldn't be good for business. Nope. Um, so, I mean, Vince will never let it. Vince would never let it happen. But Billy Gunn would beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. No, 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 no. no. I, I don't think. I, don't, I think. I, I think it would be Danhausen would beat Roman Reigns. <laughs> I mean, I I'd, I'd be all for that. I I would eat that up with a spoon because the WWE stands would lose their minds. I would too. I, I think Danhausen is. Unified WWE World Champion would be phen- universal. The Ui would be phenomenal because people just, he's so weird. People don't get him. Um, yeah. But that is the, that is the program. We have reviewed everything. We already covered the final match because we started with it. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't have a lot of anticipation for next week. Nothing's been built up that gotta see, gotta see. The pay-per-view is March. That's like three weeks. So there's time to start some other programs. You know, maybe maybe bring in some different talent. I think what would get... You were talking about ratings. I think what would pop the rating is if something big were to happen, something unexpected were to happen. That sort of thing gets people where it's must-watch TV. Like the guns winning the tag belts? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the guns winning the tag belts. I mean something like Punk coming back. I asked you, oh. I asked you in the Discord, and I saw this conversation earlier, and I wanted to kind of get your thoughts real quick before we end the show. Sure. Sure. If TK lets the Bucks leave, if they decide – they don't want to renew and they leave the company. Maybe Kenny stays, maybe Kenny doesn't. I don't think Kenny has the issue. I think the Bucks do. If the Bucks leave the company, does Tony bring back CM Punk? What do you think? I don't know. I mean, Tony hasn't ruled it out, bringing him back even if the Elite are still around. Um, so I... I don't see CM Punk coming back and, and being in the capacity he was where he's helping out with creative and he's a coach. And I, I just don't see that ever happening again. If he comes back, he's going to be separated from the boys and he's going to be, um, he's just going to be an attraction. He's going to be a Lesnar type. He shows up for the fight, does whatever they're asking him to do. And then that's it. He's not going to be, um, he's not going to be the coach. Um, so I, I don't know. I personally, I if it was me, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bring him back. I would be done with him, regardless of the status of the elite, um, because what's happened twice already is just going to happen again. It's going to be someone else he doesn't like. He's going to get into it with Mox, or he's going to get into it with Brian, or or some. Well, I couldn't imagine getting him into it with into it with Brian. <laughs> Brian just seems you know, um, seem much more passive, but Moxley, I mean, I don't think it's, it's, uh, you know, I think you could definitely see something going on between those two. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't see punk coming back at all. And if he did, it would be in an attraction mode. So I don't think the status of the bucks really, really matters. Um, but yeah, there could be a little, like if, if you're looking at it from an odds perspective, like if the chance right now of punk bringing, or of Tony bringing Punk back is like ten or twenty percent. If the elite leaves, you got to think that goes up to maybe forty percent. The the most vocal people were the Bucks. The second most vocal person behind the state behind the scenes who said he does not want Punk back was Jericho. Mm-hmm. 
Now, we already know Eddie doesn't like uh, punk. We already know that Hangman doesn't like punk. We know that Jericho doesn't like punk. Does any of that matter if he brings him back and says, just work with him? If, if Tony says, just work right. with him, we're going to make a ton of money. We're going to get the ratings. We're going to do well. Work with him and, you know, just do it. Do, I personally, I've been I've been thinking about this because I am still a punk fan. But the damage he did backstage to the relationships with the other wrestlers, I think there's obviously a group, FTR, bunch of the young guys who worked with them, who have nothing but positive feelings, and they wouldn't have an issue bringing them back. I think some of the older people that worked with punk in WWE. Jericho, Moxley, some of those guys. They're the ones who have the biggest problem because they've seen Punk at his worst. Yep. That said, Point. we've seen Punk at his worst. Yep. We saw Brawl Out. We saw him just eviscerate on a live microphone the executive vice presidents and Tony didn't do anything. So... I, he I couldn't. Ha- couldn't. Uh, I mean, he still can't for corporate reasons. I just well, I'm, I'm uh, thinking, well. Some people have said Tony should have told Punk to stop or cut Punk off. Like, how do you think Punk would have stopped when little Tony Khan telling him that's enough? I, I think no. He, I think he would have rolled right over Khan, and Khan would have looked awful. So I think Khan did all he could, which was nothing. So he gave the bug eye. He kind of like, right. what are you fucking doing? Right. So, I mean, it's hard for me because I still, even now, I'm still a a punk fan. But I know that he can't wrestle at the level he wants to. His body can't do it. He took too much time off, much like Soraya. And I don't think he got into good enough shape. And his joints aren't going to stand up to it. His foot broke doing a... A buckshot lariat his he tore a muscle just doing a normal match with mox i just as much as i want to see him back as much as fans want to see him back as much as he would pop ratings as much as he would sell pay-per-views i just don't know that it's worth it to bring him back i think ultimately i think tony's gonna do to him to punk what he's doing with andrade put him on ice Keep them. Yep. There. Just ride it out. Pay him the money. Yep. Don't buy out the contract. Don't let him go anywhere. Just keep him on ice and say, no, this is the bed you made. You're laying in it. You signed with me. Yep. You fucked me. Here you go. Yep. Lay in bed and take it. So I, I also agree that's the best course of action. Yeah. I, if they go into litigation, then everything becomes public with discovery and that's something Tony definitely does not want. He doesn't want the internet stands going through contracts and, mm-hmm. and going reading all the evidence and you know people you know you know he's just not going to let it go to court. Um, he, he can't. And if it would cost him more money than than just paying Punk the, the two million. Yeah. So um, Punk, I mean, I don't know how far Punk would go with litigation because if he's worth ten million. You're you're just gonna lose against a billionaire, and you're not gonna get anything. You're just gonna piss away your money, and and the and goodwill you, and any right. goodwill that people had towards you. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I think the I think Tony's the best course of action is to just no comment and just keep paying them, and then when the contract expires, no comment, and then Punk can go fight for Triple H or whatever the hell he wants to do. Yeah. You go back to UFC. Um, and lose or more. <laughs> right get his ass kicked exactly. again a few more times you know look completely out of place <laughs> um or you can go back and and you know make movies that no one will ever see so yeah it's it's unfortunate i like punk to an extent um i was never a huge punk fan i, I never thought he was super athletic um, i never thought he was that crisp in the ring um his promos you know, some people loved him. I was always, eh, I could take it, take it or leave it. So, um, you know, different strokes. So, I mean, I don't know. I, it, it's unfortunate because he would, 
he could draw so well. He could make so much more money. He could get yep. so many more eyes on the product. Yep. He could get so many people potentially becoming elite fans or he could have people back into escalating mocks or more people escalating MJF. I mean, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of of fans who he could could have spending money on the product and and drawing bigger crowds and more house shows and but you know, he just has an attitude problem. Um, I don't know if he's bipolar, too many shots to the head, but but getting all worked up because, you know, Hangman made a snarky comment. It, 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 so you throw your whole career away. It just doesn't really make any sense to me. I, I think, I think, honestly, I think he's diabetic. I think that being in the ring, doing all the, the being hurt, being worn out, being tired, that's why he was eating the muffins. That's why he was taking the drinks. I think he had low blood sugar. I think it drove him crazy, and he lost all control over his um, emotional intelligence. And he just started throwing shit out. He's like, "I'm hurt, so I'm gonna just give as much pain as I can." I know. The, hint, I know the feeling because I've done that. Didn't he hint towards um? Wait till you see this press conference. Didn't he hint towards that in advance? I think he went into that regardless of his physical condition. I think he went into that um, pre prepared to go after the guy about about Cole Cabana. He may have gone on like the stuff about the Pittsburgh Penguins um, and, and getting into as much detail as he did about the elite and calling MJF a prick and children and... Like that may have not been intended, but he did. I think he did go into that press conference with the intention of going after CM Punk and the Bucks and Hangman to an extent. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I try not to rehash it because it's such a painful. And I say painful because I'm a Punk fan. I did like him. I, I thought he cut amazing promos. I thought he did well in the ring with psychology. I thought his WWE run he was the voice of the voiceless he the reason i became a fan was the pipe bomb promo where he he said the shit about vince and the company that nobody else was saying that's why i was a fan so i don't know him coming back i loved it it was great it helped the company but uh, tk's best move is to simply bring him back put him in a program with jeff jarrett let Jeff Jarrett put him out of his misery with an El Cabong guitar shot. Or have him feud with, with Eddie Kingston and Eddie Kingston keeps losing to punk sure. until Eddie Kingston gets his kitten. And yeah. then with the kitten, he's able to control his emotions and he beats punk for the heavyweight title. And then punk gets his own emotional security animal. It's a turtle. Uh, I was going to say, uh, Coco B wears uh, Perry. <laughs> I was going for your. I was going. For, I was going for Yertle the turtle personally. Did I just hear someone in the background? Did I hear? Oh yeah, sorry, that was me. Sorry, that was me. Hey. Hey, what's oh. up? Well, you you're, right. you're here in time for the end. Yep. For the main event, right? Uh, we we <laughs> talked about that. We opened. We opened. We opened. We right? we spent about a good half hour, forty minutes on oh, it. Damn. All right. So I missed it. I was gonna say because. Dear God, man. And I said this yesterday. It's like when they booked Jinder Mahal over at WWE to win the championship yeah. in 2017. Because what the fuck? He went from jobber to champion in a fucking month. Like, that's the same thing with the gun club. The gun club only had, like, one high-profile win that was over an injured FTR from their actual classic match with the Briscoes. It and was you put the fucking titles on them now. It was, a no very, it was a very weak win against FTR. And that's the only real televised match they had with a win. Everything else has been on dark and elevation. Came out of nowhere. Exactly. Yeah, and that doesn't matter. If it's on dark and elevation, man, that doesn't mean shit, really. If you're getting the wins on television, that's one thing. And that's what I know you guys have probably discussed that at length. Yep. We did. We talked about how, how Top Flight got that build over numerous weeks, you know, multiple trios and tag title stuff to build up to the, the championship against the young bucks and, and, and Kenny 
and be legitimate like yes they can win and i'm okay with it they didn't do that with the guns yeah, exactly. The guns got like one win, and they're like, "Hey guys, let's challenge for the tag titles." Hey, Daddy, can we challenge for the tag titles? We 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 really want the tag titles. We don't like you because you weren't ever there for us. Like, oh God, man, please stop. And something really, I, I don't know, just it, it's an indication to me that somebody, like maybe Billy, had an influence. Like, all right, guys, I'm willing to do the storyline with the acclaimed. I'll side with them over my sons, but at one point, please let them win the tag titles. Okay, they're they're shit. I know they're shit. But please just let my sons win, okay? So what what you yep. missed was my idea that I told Jay where Billy made that plea to, to Tony, and Tony said, okay, they're going to win the titles, but if they can't get over in three weeks, their contract's over, they're not, they're they're going back to dark forever, and they're never going to be on TV, and I'm not renewing their title, their, their contract. I'd, I'd like to hope that, God, that's the case. And that, that's like... That's why Brock Anderson has been on dark and dark elevation forever because Brock Anderson had no personality. He has nothing in the ring. He's far from his dad, and so are the guns. Well, he's he's he's, he's, he's now teaming with Brian Pillman Jr. Okay, the I, I think AEW's only real good generational talent has to be Hook and compared to the others. You can't say Dustin Rhodes because Dustin Rhodes is already at the end of his career. Right. So out of the younger ones, it's got to be Hook because Hook doesn't need his daddy sitting at ringside. He doesn't need Taz sitting at the going, all right, Hook, I'm going to cut your promos for you. All right, Hook, I'm going to try to get you over. No, Taz sat at ringside. He watches him wrestle. He goes, all right, congratulations, son. You're doing a really good job. He doesn't play favorites with him. He's what? just sitting at commentary. What promos has Hook cut? Uh, yeah, you got a point there. Hook's okay. only like, spoke like maybe like one time. But I mean, like, you know, with the guns, Billy usually spoke – four of them half the time and Arn speaks for uh, Brock. There's it's another true. there's another second generation Adam Cole. Adam Cole is Michael Cole's baby. Oh I didn't realize that he was his son. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah it does. Except oh, he's not whining like his father was as a heel. You know what we need to do? We gotta start the coal miners. Gotta bring the, the coal train back or whatever the hell it was. The the, the booth. His isolation booth because the people hated him yeah. so much. Yeah, and then Adam Cole's going to show up talking to his dad. May I have your attention, please? I have received an email from the anonymous Raw general manager, and I quote, wait, wait, sh I met the anonymous AEW general manager, and I quote, Adam Cole will be getting an AEW championship shot, and that's just it, baby. That's just it. So, yeah, he's going to come out talking like his dad now. That makes sense. Right, and l l lest we not also forget Brian Cage, who was Christian Cage's son. Uh, I, yeah, I was gonna say right. I, I did forget that he was his son, but is is he see, I thought they were brothers, but you're telling me that it's his son. See, I just I don't know how that works. What's their family lineage? Is is their family tree like a, a stick, like a straight branch? Like Yes, yes it is. It okay. is. And the thing is that Christian got all the charisma and all the good looks and all everything else. Brian just only got like a little bit of good skill, so that's it. That's I know what like... happened. I know what happened. Christian married Brian Cage's mother, but his they Wait, have the Brian same Cage's father. But they they have the same father. Basically, he's his own grandfather. What the? F oh god. Okay, so wait, are you telling me that Brian Cage's mother is a supermodel? Well, she married Christian Cage, of course. He wouldn't marry anything less than a supermodel. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, was it Edge or was it Christian that was married to Val Venus' sister for like a little bit? I think that was Edge. Yeah, that was Edge. Edge has like a real affinity for dating co-workers like big time. First uh, Val's sister, then Lita, then Beth Phoenix. And Beth he actually had kids with, so. Well, he married her too, but Lita also had a very uh, close affiliation with the wrestlers she worked with over the years. Yeah, many of them. I think that it's definitely more. Yeah. Jeff Jarrett is Jerry Jarrett's kid. So yeah, but that's real. That doesn't count. <laughs> exactly, that's real. And then Lee Johnson is Dwayne Johnson's son. That makes sense. <laughs> Wait, but he got nothing from his dad though, except for last name. That's it. He got his skin, dad's last name. Skin color. Oh yeah, that's right. That too. But he doesn't have his dad's charisma. He doesn't have his dad's skill. He doesn't can't get himself over. He has to have everyone else do it for him. You know, Jack Perry is Perry Saturn's son. Ah, interesting. 
Because Perry Saturn's <laughs> real name is John Perry. I don't know if you knew that. I thought he was someone else's kid, but... Jack uh, Perry? Be... Yeah. Who the hell would he be related to? That doesn't make yep. any sense. We got negative one. Let's not forget about negative one. Yeah. But negative one isn't officially on the roster. He's Wait. just there until, you know, he's old enough to actually join. They just have him with the contract. That's it. Well, fortunately, his mother works for the company, so nepotism. <laughs> and and Billy Starks is Ricky Starks' daughter, I think. Yes. No, no. She had to change the spelling because she didn't want to ride coattails on Ricky. Perfect. God. Okay. And, and the Rampage women, they actually invented Rampage. They, they uh, Tony had to buy the rights of Rampage, the Rampage. Do, we, do you mean the Renegade sisters? Sure. Call them that. They're the Rampage twins. Jeez. <laughs> Tony had to and, buy and, the rights of the name so that he could put on his program. And the last one that we didn't mention is, is Trench is actually Prince Albert's kid. Oh, that, that makes a lot more sense. He's big. He doesn't. He can't rust for shit, and he doesn't speak. So it makes sense. So, I, I thought that you were going to say that Trench was Triple H's son because of the golden shovel. <laughs> golden shovel. Yeah, he's going to bury shovel? everybody. Oh, okay. See the the Wait, whole the... the whole thing is the the shovel trench. See, never mind. Ah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see it there. This this is deteriorating quickly. It's it's Nyla Rose related to Playboy Buddy Rose. <laughs> I don't know about that one. I mean, Nyla might say that, but also. Oh, you're killing knows? me. I mean, Nyla does a lot of crazy shit. You're killing me, Smalls. Nyla's wife is related to Buddy Rose. Mm, makes sense right there. Yeah, because the last name. Everybody knows that if your last name is the same, you're clearly related. So, Krillin, are you excited about Rampage? Oh, God. Uh, Marina Shafir competing in a match. Please, somebody put me out of my misery. Vicky's going to be there, though. Ricky is? Vicky. Vicky. Oh, yeah, Vicky, Vicky. Sorry. I'm I'm hard of hearing sometimes. Uh, that it's alright. I would fucked up to say though. But yeah, no, my hearing sucks at times. But yeah, Vicky Guerrero, I'm I'm a fan of Eddie. I'm a fan of hers. The whole screen, the I really found it. Uh, WWE's treatment of her really fucked up. Where you know she was being like everybody's girlfriend at this point. That was just like why, why is this even a thing? The only ones she was even able, able to get over were Dolph and Edge. Everyone else, no. They tried with Eric Escobar and that failed because dude wasn't that good in the ring. I mean, uh, then again, I've never seen him wrestle, but I'm assuming since the WWE fired him. So, okay. and but uh, the one match I am looking forward to tomorrow night has to be the BCC against Sabian Butcher and Blade because that's actually going to be a good match. You have six good guys in the ring. I could care less about Orange Cassidy having to put Lee Moriarty in a match trying to get something good out of him because Lee's like, hey, here's my personality. Here's my gimmick. I just come out dancing and wearing a tiger mask. That's it. Well, oh, you you I know, they are they are mask. building up Lee Moriarty, uh, tiger style. He's got the tiger mask versus uh, Eddie Kittenston. So that's coming. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Eddie Kittenston. Yeah. Against uh, tiger, tiger style. Moriarty. Uh-huh. Yeah. Tiger style. Uh-huh. And then eventually... Uh, Eventually, with they're going to... With that? Kitty Housen in his corner. <laughs> well, yeah, Kitty Housen is going to oh, be yeah. their mascot. But eventually, what's going to happen is they're going to have their matches, they're going to get respect for each other, and then they're going to start teaming together as the uh, the cat patrol. And they're going to come oh, out oh, in God, full no. cat outfits with the ears and the tails, and they're going to look like Josie and the putty cat, pussy cats. <laughs> I was going to say, putty cats? What What... All right, Look, so man, I'm turning into Tweety, okay? It's late, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I work with children. As, as Gorilla <laughs> Monsoon would say, will you stop? <laughs> I can stop. As a matter of fact, I can hit the stop button, the stop recording button anytime I want. All right. And I think yeah, we should. Just, I'm for, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to call it a night. Yeah. I'm Thanks sorry, for joining us, Krillin, even though it was late. Yep. It's always a pleasure to My have pleasure. you on. I will try to join early next time so you could uh, just shit talk the ass boys the entire time. We did. <laughs> we did. We had a yeah, good time. You know what? You know I always want to be a part of that. I mean, I can't stand the ass boys. It, faces are heels. 
they're fucking obnoxious, they're annoying, and I just want to smack the living fuck out of them. No, don't don't sugarcoat it. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> I did. And on that note, we are going to go ahead and end this podcast. Thank you very much for listening to the Elite Mark Order AEW Rampage, Rampage, AEW Dynamite Review for February 8th, 2023. And um, JJ, JJ for life. For life.